Welcome back to BBN tonight. Let's talk about Kentucky's offense, which despite a couple of unknowns, has as much excitement around it as it has in a long time. That's right. The team has one goal, and that's to win the SEC. But of course, to do that, the Cats are going to have to beat Georgia. We can't really just focus on just them. We got to just take care of business and trust our development as a team. Um, be as physical as possible because you know that a team like them is always going to punch you in the mouth. But if you punch them in the mouth back, uh, that's, how you, that's how you gain respect and that's how you, you keep things. Um, you, you keep the, the edge on your side. And um, we just got to come in with a positive attitude and just utmost confidence in our ability. Like we have the guys. It's not like we are un, we are unmatched on a, on a talent level. Like we have the dudes to, to go up against those teams and beat them. And it helps when you have two players on the Maxwell Award list. Levis is on there alongside running back Chris Rodriguez. But after some of the off-field trouble this summer, there are still questions regarding if C-Rod will be available to start the season. We all got to be confident, you know. That's, that's what we take pride in. Um, we push each other to be better. And whether Chris going to be there or not, we all going to be the same people when he was in there. I mean, we're very confident. Chris is with us every single day, so nothing's really changed. Um, you just continue to just keep doing the same thing. It's just, if, if anything does happen, we're just going to be ready to go. I've definitely grown as a running, like a college running back, for sure. Because, I mean, even in high school, I didn't play that much running back. But as a college running back, I've definitely grown, um, especially being able to work with Coach Settle. Uh, great dude, by the way. Um, I've grown strength-wise, speed-wise. I mean, I can see the holes a lot, lot easier. Um, just reading the playbook. I know the playbook like the back of my hand, so I mean, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. You heard from three established guys there, and don't forget the Cats added FCS second team All-American Ramon Jefferson as well, so the depth is there for the Cats. Stoops had no comment on C-Rod's status today. A place where depth might have been a concern is wide receiver, but you heard Stoops earlier say that he's high on the group and they're excited to get to work. I kind of just show him that I can just go out and, you know, compete with at a college level. I want to just show him that that he can trust me at any time of the game or any time at practice that I can, whenever he throws me the ball, that I can go make that play. The biggest skill set is probably your brain. Because, like, you got a good brain, hit good head on your shoulders, you will most likely be, have a bigger trust, uh, get the ball more, and be more comfortable in the offense. Man, it's unbelievable. We um, build a bond so um, quick, and now we just tight. and. Um, I just feel like the bond unbreakable, and we all working hard to get to where we want to be in, man. It's just a good feeling being around a good group of guys. All right, let's shift now to the big guys in the trenches. The Big Blue Wall had some holes to fill this season after losing three starters from last year. Today, Stoops talked about the depth of the O-line, specifically the tackle position, and we also found out the depth got even thinner. I feel very good. I feel very good. Um, DeAndre has been very uh, steady there. You know, we have a great one, Keontae, uh, backing him up. Jeremy's done a really good job on the other side, along with David. You know, David Wollenbaugh has been uh, a pleasant surprise, you know, and, and doing a really, really, you know, solid job. So we are thin at the offensive line. Uh, Josh Jones is out as well. He he's uh, He's been off and on, you know, with injury his whole time here, really, and it's too bad for him, uh, but he'll have a, a procedure done where he, he will be out for the year. And that he hasn't played much for us, but it, it's, it's depth that we need at that position. So, Yeah, so there's your first significant injury news of fall camp. Josh Jones out for the year, making the depth even more thin along the O-line, a position group that will be monitored closely throughout camp. Big shoes to fill there for sure, and that goes for a couple of local players along the line. Jagger Burton and Eli Cox, they're looking to take that next step, and we've seen quite the transformation from Burton in year two. Listen to how much he's transformed. And then obviously I gained a little weight, so um, going through it a different time, you know, a little more tired sometimes, you know, 260 running around and stuff is a lot easier than 305, but you know, I feel like I've being able to adjust pretty well. I mean, everyone's bought into making you the best player you can be on and off the field. And so as long as those players buy into that system and buy into that process, you'll see everyone flourish. I mean, Jagger's put on 45 pounds of good weight since just last year. So I mean, when guys buy into what the coaches, the staffs are all trying to help you do, it, it, you'll see guys flourish and be able to blossom like he will here soon. All right, we're talking defense next. Hear from J.J. Weaver on his close relationship with Brad White. 